So let's continue our discussion on competitive analysis tools by talking about multi-attribute utility analysis and multi-attribute utility modeling. Remember that we've been talking about different sorts of competitor analysis tools and we've discussed product books, battlefield maps. Now let's talk about MOM models or multi-attribute utility models. Multi-attribute utility models um, uh, also include snake diagrams and perceptual maps and so we'll, we'll talk about all of those along the line. This is a good way to analyze competitors if there are, if we're interested in the importance of the attributes or features and we, and we can evaluate those um, brands on those attributes, and then we can compare and contrast those evaluations. It's good for feature attribute analysis and diagnostics of product weakness areas and strengths. It's usually customer based. That is, we usually collect this information by surveying customers about their beliefs about attributes and individuals brands evaluations on those attributes. So here I have an, a, a, a simple example. The example is our universities, three, three universities in Nevada. And as a parent, I'm trying to decide and, and, and my child is trying to decide which of these three schools to attend for college. The three alternatives are Reno State University, UNLV and the University of Elko. So we went in and surveyed a number of parents and students and asked them what were the most important attributes in deciding which school to attend. Well, what they told us was that, the, that five of the most important attributes were quality of education, cost of education, placement, the atmosphere at the university, and class sizes. So now here we were able to, we asked students to, to tell us on a scale of one to five where five is very important and one is not important at all, how important are each of these attributes? And as you might expect, quality of education was the most important attribute, followed by costs, which was three out of five, followed by placement and atmosphere, both of which were two out of five, and then finally, class size, which is important, but the least important of these particular attributes. We then went in and asked parents and students to evaluate these three universities on these five attributes. So take, for example, quality of education. We asked parents and students to evaluate Reno State University on the quality of education, then UNLV on the quality of education, and the University of Elko. Now we asked them to evaluate them in this way. How, what, how good is the quality of education on, on a scale of one to five, where one is poor and five is excellent? And so you can see that on quality of education, UNLV scored a five out of five, which is as good as you can get. Reno State got four out of five and the University of Elko got three out of five. It turned out that in terms of costs, Reno State and UNLV were the same on cost, but the University of Elko was a little cheaper and so got a better score. In terms of placement, Reno got the highest score followed by Elko and UNLV got a very distant low score of one, which is the worst it could have gotten. Atmosphere, three, three, and three. Class sizes, two, two, and three. So, to how would we use this data? So the way that we use this data is we, we take this data and we, we, we figure out based on this data, which is the most preferred university and where is it that our university or, the, or some of the competitors are stronger than us and weaker than us. So the, the multi-attribute utility calculation looks like this. It's the importance weight times the individual evaluation and then summed. So for instance, on Reno, the, uh, the quality of education importance was a five, Reno scored as a four, they got 20 points for that. In terms of cost, the importance was three, Reno was evaluated as a three, they get nine points. In terms of placement, Reno was a two, uh, our importance was a two, Reno was a four, they get eight. In terms of atmosphere, the importance was a two, Reno scored a three for six. And then class sizes, it was an importance of one and Reno scored a two for a total of 45 points.
compared to UNLV, which gets 44 points, and University of Elko, which scored 42 points. So in this case, Reno State is the preferred alternative, with UNLV a close second and the University of Elko a third. Now, that's one of the ways that we can use this information. The other way that we use this information is to go in and look at it more diagnostically. If you take a look at UNLV, it becomes obvious right away that the biggest weakness that UNLV has is on placement scores, where UNLV scored a 1, and Reno scored a 4, and the University of Elko scored a 3. So Reno is a distant third, or I'm sorry, UNLV is a distant third on career placement. So what would you do? Well, UNLV has two choices here. One alternative would be to do a better job of placement and do a better job of promoting our ability to place students. That, of course, would hopefully change our number from one to two or three or four, and then that would result in us having a higher score and be more preferred. But there is a second alternative, and a second alternative is to reduce the importance of that attribute. So if you score really low on an attribute compared to your competitors, you can either try to get better on that attribute, or you can try to make that attribute less important. In this case, it's only a two now. But if we, were to, if we could convince parents and students that placement was even less important than this, it was, it was more like a one, UNLV would then score higher than Reno or the University of Elko on the total score. So this helps us understand how we stack up against the competition, which of our attributes are we stronger on, quality of education, where are we weaker, career placement, and what would we have to do to move up in terms of positive evaluation of us relative to the competition. Another way to, to present this information would be to present it in a perceptual map. Here we have an example of athletic footwear and a perceptual map. Another way that we could present this information is with a snake diagram where we simply do a visual representation of that table that we just had in front of us. And some people prefer visual representations like a snake diagram as opposed to a tabular version of the, of the information like we had with the multi-attribute utility model table. In summary, the competitive analysis might be the single most important aspect of marketing opportunity analysis and marketing plan. And it turns out that perceptual maps, snake diagrams, and multi-attribute utility models are often one of the best ways to evaluate the competition. So, take some time and do it right. And remember, there is no better way to spend time than learning about the competition.